What is up everyone and welcome to a video that I haven't quite settled on a title for yet. So, whatever I do pick, it's probably going to be quite confusing and you guys are going to need to hear me out for the next two or three minutes of just me rambling on about various things before we actually get on to doing anything if you want to find out what the heck is going on because unfortunately today I've got a little bit of bad news. It could be seen as bad news, could be seen as just sort of future development, but it's something that's got to be done because of uh, all the things that I'm going to explain in this video, basically. So as you guys know, it is now September 2015. If you go back exactly a year, September 2014 was when I started back It's My Natural Colour in full swing with five videos a week, and pretty much consistently stayed up, only with a couple of breaks here and there, pretty much stayed up with that five videos a week thing until uh, just before little Eli arrived. Um, of course, as you guys know, I'm on a little bit of a break at the moment and I don't really have any concrete information as to when I'm going to return to a schedule, um, when I'm going to be moving and how it's all going to slot into place. Right now, I really don't know. So I'm just kind of just winging it and seeing what happens. I will try and ramp up a few more videos, but you know, I'm not going to be making any promises just because of how unpredictable my life is. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, Pretty much a year ago today, I started back YouTube and uh, I came back sort of really fierce and really hard and really set out to improve things. And over that year, I did so many things and a lot of that year was focused on something I was calling my ultimate desk setup. And it evolved from my two little 20 inch monitors and a pretty old school setup with a lot of bad sort of, it gave me bad posture and I had a lot of pain using the setup. Um, a sort of messy, cluttered mess of a desk. I, I turned that around and now I have what you see in front of you here, which is a gorgeous display. Of course, I didn't do all this on my own. I had some fantastic donations along the way. You know who you are. Thank you so much. Um, now I have this sort of fantastic setup that I'm really, really proud of and I find absolutely perfect. The setup itself is glorious. I love these monitors. I love everything about it. But there's always the heart to the setup. As you guys know, I'm a massive desktop user. Right from the get-go, I've loved my desktop Macs. Even back in 2009 when I started fiddling around with Power Macs and stuff, right at the very beginning of this channel, I've always had a massive soft spot for desktops. And uh, as you guys know, at the heart of this setup is the Hackintosh. A major part of 2015 for me was building the Powerhack G4 Quicksilver. It was an immensely interesting experience. Um, I'm very pleased with the videos. I was a little bit disappointed with the reception in terms of views, but the reception in terms of people's kind feedback was about a million times better than I could ever wish for. So I care about that so much more than views. But anyway, I did that project five-part video and it was insanely awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed and in my opinion I built a kick-ass machine. But unfortunately I'm here today to tell you guys that, at least temporarily anyway, I will be removing the Hackintosh from my main setup. Now I know you're just about to go into that comment section you're like, Tom, no, why? What's happening man? And I know a lot of people are going to start slagging me off because yes, a lot of the parts in that Hackintosh are donated. But hear me out guys. Please, 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 before you post a comment, hear me out and listen to what the heck is going on with my setup. I know it's a bit messy, but down here you see the beauty itself. This is the Powerhack G4 Quicksilver. Quick rundown then, this is an old Quicksilver case that has been heavily modified to accept ATX PC components, or should I say MATX PC components, without too much compromise of the original design. I'm absolutely over the moon with how the case modification turned out. And as you guys know, my dad, combined with the laser hive stuff, um, just did a fantastic, fantastic job with this case. And then, of course, I built the machine in here. I put a lot of effort into planning out my components and designing the internal layout of the machine. And this is pretty much a killer system that has a lot of power under the hood. It's based around an Intel Core i7-4770 with 32 gigs of RAM, as well as a GTX 960 and two 128 gigabyte Samsung 850 Pro SSDs. This is a killer system that's very high end and something that I wouldn't have dreamed of building even sort of a year ago. 
uh, or two years ago, let alone, you know, building the whole thing and getting it up and running in, in quite a short space of time between the, the planning and actually building the system. It didn't take me very long at all, just a few months to get it off the ground. But of course, the donations really, really did help with that. You know who you are once again. Huge, huge thanks. So, you guys are probably sick of my rambling and you want to hear why the heck I'm temporarily pulling this from my main setup. Well, as you guys know, this is a Hackintosh. And everybody knows that a Hackintosh is never ever in a million years going to be as stable as an Apple Macintosh. As a system that you buy from Apple, a PC that's got OS X shoved onto it is never ever going to be as stable. Say what you like, and if you're a Hackintosh pro, and you know the ins and outs of Clover, and you know absolutely everything there is to know about it, which is probably impossible anyway, even then, it is never ever going to be as stable and as refined as a Mac that you can buy from the Apple Store today. I could walk into the Apple Store with a grand and walk away with a machine that is ultimately very, very reliable, brand new, Apple, professional, awesome, um, but you guys know the pros and cons to go with building a Hackintosh. I don't need to spell them out for you. What am I saying? I'm saying that this machine is not reliable enough for me at this moment in time. Now, is that the machine's fault? Maybe not. I'm not 100% sure, and I will be doing various things, including installing Windows, to try and diagnose what's wrong with my machine, um, because I have reached probably my wit's end with this computer right now. I haven't been documenting things because it's very hard, very, very hard to document um, over such a busy time, you know. I've had a little baby and I'm just sort of learning all this being a dad stuff and family stuff. And sort of the bottom of my priorities um, is my computer setup, which is understandable. However, my computer makes me money. That is the bottom line. Over the, over the last year, I have really, really stepped up the game in terms of the amount of money that I make on this setup. And it is now becoming a sort of very large part, almost, nearly 50% of the entire income that I earn is generated in some way by me using my primary computer. And for that, I need reliability. Now you guys might be thinking, hey Tom, what's wrong man? You installed, everything was going great, you made part five, everything was good, and then you made that video about moving a Hackintosh onto your main setup, and you've had loads of videos where you're using your Hackintosh. Why isn't it reliable? This system still suffers from random freezes. So I decided to reinstall the whole system. Everything was fine for three days, random freezes. And I know people are gonna be jumping down into the comment section telling me things with little bits of advice and little bits of everything. But I have trawled through literally hundreds, if not touching the thousands of forum pages, trying to find out what is wrong with my specific hardware configuration. And I cannot pinpoint it. So right now I'm at the point where I think that there could be something wrong with a bit of the hardware that's causing the freezes. I have done everything in my power to eliminate the random freezes and it is beginning to be very very tedious. Now random freezes can range from being one freeze a week to 20 freezes a day. It is totally random and I can't get rid of it. I thought I nailed it but after doing a fresh install the other day and stuff to um, solve some other issues on my system in regards to updates and stuff and a little bit of carelessness on my part, I'm not going to blame the machine entirely, just put it this way, I do not have the time to fiddle with my Hackintosh. Right now, my time is totally and utterly 100% limited in every aspect of my life. I am rushed off of my feet and I do not have the time to babysit and to coddle and cuddle and to wrap this system in cotton wool because I cannot dedicate that amount of time to this computer. This computer is meant to be making me money, not losing me money because of the time that I'm spending that I could be making money trying to fix the computer. So, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna pull the Hackintosh from the main setup and I am very, very sad to do so, but I'm gonna pull it from the main setup, I'm gonna put it aside, and I'm gonna put the MacBook Pro in the center of the setup, and I'm gonna wait until a later date where I have time to put this up on the test bench with the test monitor, test keyboard and mouse, where it does not affect my daily workflow and try and troubleshoot 
the damn computer. So I know a lot of you are going to have totally mixed feelings about this. I know a lot of you are going to understand and you're going to say, yeah, Tom, that's totally fine. You need reliability. You need a stable system. Do whatever you've got to do, man. I've got some really understanding people like that as part of the IMNC community, and I really, really do appreciate your input. But I also know that I've got some people uh, in the community, which is fine because everyone's life is different. I've got some people that seem to be able to dedicate 24 hours of their day to troubleshooting their computers. And if you have a Hackintosh that isn't going fully smoothly for whatever reason, I mean, you can't ever predict these things. Even if your hardware is in the recommended, recommended hardware list, you can never predict these things. Um, I, I am not one of these people that have that has this time to dedicate to the system. Now, I know a lot of you are going to go down into the comments, and I've mentioned it a lot this video, so I am going to stop very soon. Um, I know a lot of you are going to go down and say, Tom, just do this, Tom, do that. Oh, man, you built a Hackintosh, you got to get it working, blah, blah, blah. I can't do it. I'm so, so sorry, guys. I'm turning around, and I rarely, rarely do that on this channel. I'm turning around to tell you guys that I am so sorry. I can't do it. I cannot get this system working stably. I don't know a lot about Hackintoshes, but I know one shed load more than I did when I started. The amount of things that I've tried and the amount of forums that I've traipsed and the amount of the people that I've spoken to with machines and the lack of progress that I've made with it is enough to be really, really quite depressing when I've put so much time, effort and money into the system. So right now, I just need a little break from my Hackintosh. And I'm very, very lucky that I own this fantastically reliable Retina MacBook Pro. So, let's put the Hackintosh to one side, and if needs be, I will make a dedicated Q&A video devoted to your questions. So if you do have questions about my Hackintosh, and you want more details on the situations, then feel free to post them down into the comment section. Um, but my decision is final, and this video may not be uploaded until a couple of days, or even maybe a week or two, after I've actually recorded this video. So, um, all these changes are probably made, so there's no changing my mind. Um, but if you guys want a dedicated Q&A video, I will make it. So, all of the sad stuff set aside, I just want to just confirm, before we move on, I want to confirm that the Hackintosh is not going anywhere. I'm not selling it. I'm not stripping it out. It will be my main system again if I can get it working properly. And half of me is just thinking I might as well erase every drive on the damn thing and wait until the new version of OS X and then start all over again. We'll see what happens, but right now I need a break from it. So, let's move on and chat about my MacBook Pro. I've owned my MacBook Pro for almost a year now. It's a Retina model from late 2013. I got it refurbished from the Apple Store and it cost me just a shade over £1,000. I have now paid off the system because, as you know, I bought it with money that I didn't have, but I have now fully paid it off, which is great. It now belongs to me. And what I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of money put aside. I'm going to purchase Apple Care for this system. I'm going to purchase Apple Care because right now the Retina MacBook Pro is the only system that I have out of all of the computers that I have hanging around my house. The MacBook Pro system is the only one that can support me fully in what I need to do right now. And it's a very reliable machine, but I do carry it around with me. So um, just in case it gets damaged in any way, I'm going to be purchasing the Apple Care for 250 quid or whatever it is. I think it's worth it. And also I've put an order into Amazon, so expect a new video soon of a couple of peripherals and accessories that I need to make this MacBook Pro compatible, fully compatible with my desk setup, including implementations for more USB 3 ports, uh, a FireWire port, Gigabit Ethernet, uh, optical drive and all those various things so you've got that to look forward to. Also the case that I've had on the system for almost a year now is uh, definitely showing its age and I've ordered the new case so all that is really good um, but the machine itself is in fantastic working order and believe it or not I've been using it probably more than the Hackintosh um, throughout the entirety of having the Hackintosh on my main setup so it's about time that I implemented the MacBook Pro into my main setup. Now as you guys may have noticed um, in the IMNC Junior video, there was vastly improved audio quality. I have spent a little bit of money on the side building up um, a little collection of equipment on the side uh, that I'm going to put towards improvements made on the channel. And something that I need to be able to use these improvements, this new audio setup and a couple of things that I've got planned. I've got so many cool things planned, guys. Um, I just need a reliable system to be able to do that, and I need FireWire, I need this, I need that. So it's about time that I got my main setup sorted again. Now, one big thing is, as you guys know, the triple, the triple monitor setup is basically the staple of the entire desk setup. 
The MacBook Pro supports two external monitors, so I will be ditching one monitor for now. It'll just be going upstairs out of the way, packed away safely, and I'll be using the other two monitors uh, as my main displays, and I'll be using the MacBook Pro monitor as well. So it'll still be triple monitor, but one of them will be nine inches smaller, which is a bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. So I've talked an absolute shed ton right now, guys. I hope you're on the same page as me. I'm desperate for a swig of water, so I'm going to take that swig of water, and then we're going to take a closer look at my setup and the alterations that I'm going to make. Over here, you guys can see my right-hand monitor. That's pretty much where I want the MacBook Pro to be. Um, but it's going to be a little bit more over, I'd say. I'm not even too sure how it's going to work out um, until I try it. So I'm going to move the mixer. And by the way, the mixer, especially in my new office, I've got all these great plans, guys. I can't wait to show you. This is a Mackie Onyx 802i, I believe. It's a lovely Firewire mixer. This is going to be the audio hub of my uh, new office audio setup. It, it's going to be... Um, absolutely phenomenal and I've got so many great plans for improved quality in every type of video um, in terms of audio because audio is very important and it's time I stepped up my game. So we're not going to have a monitor over here, um, however the two newer monitors are the outer two, the middle one is the one that I always had so I'll be packing the middle one away because it does um, have a slightly more age to look to the panel because it's more used. Um, it's very, very minimally noticeable, but I'm going to use the two outer ones um, because they just, you know, it makes more sense really. I'll pack the older one away, it makes sense. Um, over here is probably where I'm going to end up putting the mixer um, because the MacBook Pro is going to be dominating the space over the other side, but again, I'm not even sure about that. The N64 is something that I rarely play at the moment, of course. I don't get time, any spare time that I get, I've got to try and make money. So I'm going to be putting the N64 to one side, wherever that goes. I'd like to keep it set up because I always you know, fancy a bit of N64, but one thing I'm going to do is strip back this setup and make it a lot more simple um, because there's just no point adding complications. So all of the stuff that goes along with the N64, like the VGA to composite adapter, no sorry, the composite to VGA, and all of the audio switching which is all hidden under the desk um, just to get the N64 to work with my computer monitor, all of that will be stripped out. And in case anyone's wondering, the KVM switch will be stripped out because an advantage to making a test bench setup was I don't need to switch on my main setup anymore. I only have one computer on here, I don't need to switch. So I can pull out all of that cabling and make things, you know, a lot more simple down the bottom. Um, one thing that we will not be touching at all in any way during any of this process is the server shelf. I know you can't see it in this frame very well, but the server shelf is under here. As you can probably tell by the background noise, the big raid array is powered down right now. Um, that's for various reasons. I haven't had it going 24-7 because there was no point because of the min minimal use, but the Mac Mini has been going 24-7 and it's been uh, doing everything that I throw at it really well. There are a few adjustments that I need to make to my servers and... Um, to be perfectly honest, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a completely different networking setup in the new place, like radically different, um, different systems, different everything. It's gonna take probably about a year to implement and to save up for all the stuff that I need. Um, but this this setup, it will not be like that. It'll be like that for a bit, but not for long. So. Rambling aside guys, this is so much talking but you guys know me, um, these videos will become more refined but this is just sort of like almost like a vlog style I guess you could say in a way. Um, I'm going to start ripping out components and stuff because I don't know what else to do. Um, here it is, let's get started. So as you guys can hopefully see, that's pretty much everything physically off the desk that I can take off the desk. Um, now I think the next priority for me is going to be to pull the centre display out from the system and um, get this display over here. So uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention and is when I picked up my EyeSight camera um, is I never did get FireWire working with my Hackintosh without the Hackintosh crashing. That's one big reason why the eyesight has been down and why I haven't been able to fully utilize my new audio setup and that's pretty much why you're not hearing decent audio right now. Um, anyway, what can I do? This is the reason why I'm doing everything. By the way, I will not be using the blue snowball with the new setup but I will leave it there for now because there'll be another microphone on that stand. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just shut my gob once more and you guys can watch me move around these displays.
So as you guys can see, it looks very lopsided and this monitor arm here actually looks borderline um, stupid without a display covering it. I was only using the monitor arm to hold up the mic stand by the way guys. So I'm probably going to completely ditch that entire thing because it's not going to be covered by the MacBook Pro. Either that or use it from a different angle. Not 100% sure yet, have not decided. But what I'm going to do is pause the camera. One of the primary reasons why I'm going to pause the camera is because I do not have a video storage solution sorted to edit this video on my MacBook Pro yet. That is to come. I'm very limited with hard drives and whatnot at the moment. Um, so importing these long clips in order to speed up for you guys to watch is a little bit tricky for me at the moment. So, I am now going to do jump cuts to different states of the setup and how it is going to look. And uh, I am actually enjoying doing this video because this reminds me very much of one of my most popular videos and that is rearranging my desk setup. But this time it's for a slightly sadder cause but at least it's progression and the end result will give me something that is functional. So as I said I've got a lot of stuff coming from Amazon that's going to make this setup possible. But I had a couple of things here already. The first thing is something that you hardcore old 2009 IMNC subscribers will recognise and that is the Griffin Elevator. For my birthday, which is on October the 1st, and this was my birthday on 2009, so if I can try and figure out how old I was. 15 maybe? Yeah, 15, 16, 17, 15, 16, anyway, whatever it was. Um, yeah, six years ago. Oh, 14, 15, I don't know. However old I was, I got the Griffin Elevator for one of my birthday presents, and it was along with Snow Leopard and a couple of other really, really cool things for my MacBook. So this is almost like a massive throwback because, as you guys know, I've always had Power Macs and Mac desktops to tinker around with, but for a long time, until I got my Mac Pro really, the white MacBook was my main machine, the 2007 MacBook, sitting on this Griffin elevator. So um, it's nice to have it back out again. And of course, I have here a mini display port to DVI cable, which is gonna handle one of the displays and the other display will be handled by HDMI to DVI, which is a cable that I already use for this setup. So that is all going quite well. Um, there is a distinct lack of USB ports at the moment. I do have a seven port USB 3.0 powered hub on the way, but until then I'll be using the built-in USB hubs on my monitors um, for USB 2.0 devices and stuff like that. So it'll be absolutely fine for now. So believe it or not, the main sort of wiring and stuff for the setup is almost complete. Um, what I've basically done is wrapped the cables that are going to be going into the MacBook Pro around here. Right now we have a USB cable and um, a mini display cable. Mini display is going to the center monitor all wired in and USB, I want to focus on USB for a second. That is going into the bottom of the center monitor which is then in turn feeding um, the second monitor out through this cable, the keyboard out through this cable and the Creative X Mod sound card out through the bottom and as well it's going to feed the mouse out of the bottom there as well. And then because we're feeding four more ports on here, that gives me two side ports, um, which will allow me to plug in like pen drives or whatever. And that also gives me two ports on the bottom for any USB devices that are going to be on the desk. That's all 2.0 though, and that'll only be um, kept for those 2.0 devices. Like I said, I got a USB 3 hub on the way. All that's really left to do now is to put everything in place and plug it all in properly. Um, reason I've got the mixer on the desk, it's not actually plugged in at all right now and it won't be used for a little while until I get the Firewire, uh, the Thunderbolt to Firewire. Um, right now it's just got the power cable plugged into it, I just wanted to check that the power cable reached. And it's not going to be used as an output device, as you guys may have already noticed, I spoke about the Creative X mod. I won't be outputting using the mixer until my new office setup because there's going to be a big reveal in terms of the audio on this setup for my office because I'm going to be doing like a studio office hybrid, hence the reason why I've got this. But for now, it's just going to be about input and for me experimenting with the different audio options for my videos. Um, so the X mod is still being used along with the Creative 2.1 speakers, um, you know, the standard setup um, for now, which is cool, which is great. Um, so I'm going to get all this finished and wired up and the next update you see may be with the MacBook on the setup. So here it is everyone, the new setup. This is at least my temporary main Mac setup. Looking at this right now, I do not feel disappointed. I feel, if anything, relieved as well as um, excited and 
I'm looking at a reliable system that hopefully <laughs> won't freeze uh, every so often. This MacBook Pro has been great for me and hopefully uh, now that it's completely hooked up like a total you know patient or whatever um, hopefully it'll still work just as great. Now of course I have this little cluster over here of various USB 3 devices including my hard drive dock um, which I've been using more and more recently and I'll be using quite a lot during the course of uh, using this MacBook. I've got my 3 terabyte external which still hosts the original um, or the latest imaged time machine backup from my Mac Pro that I keep on there. That's sort of like my safety net at the moment. That's the only hint of reliability in my setup that I have left. Um, but hopefully that will all change now. Here I have the external drive that hosts my iTunes library. Um, the Creative X mod is hiding under there. So all of this USB 3 kind of area here is going to be connected to the USB 3 hub that will sit underneath the uh, Griffin elevator stand. Um, as well as a couple of other things that will connect. As you guys can see, I've got the microphone sitting over here. This will not be the blue snowball for much longer. It isn't actually connected at the moment. I could connect it if I wanted to. I've got a free port. Um, I've actually got four free ports, as you guys know, on this monitor over here. I could easily connect it. I've got plenty of cable length. So I may do that just for a for now type thing, but it's sitting there just so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, there we go. The mixer is in the same state, nothing plugged into it at all. It's just sitting there with power um, going to it. Um, the mixer kind of sticks out of the desk a little bit. That's the trouble with having a corner desk. I'll, um, I'll give you a little sneak peek into my new office desk. It will not be a corner desk, guys. It will be a normal rectangular desk um, so that you do not have this problem. You can just have everything sitting flat, which I, I would much prefer. Um, but corner desks are pretty cool. You can achieve some nice looking things like this. So this is the setup. Bare basic, as you guys can see, but I like it. Um, I actually say bare basic, it's fairly complex, especially considering, you know, compared to the things that I used to have. Um, I'll be using the eyesight built into the MacBook as my webcam, of course, there's nothing, nothing stopping me doing that at all. And yeah, that is the setup. So this pretty much concludes the video, guys. If I drag it out any longer, it's just going to be unwatchable. So there it is. Um, this is what I will be editing my videos on and using as my uh, daily use setup from now on in. Um, until you see me move to the new place, and if you see this setup in the new place, that means I haven't fixed either the Mac Pro or the Hackintosh. Um, by the way, I did mention the Mac Pro there, even if I do fix the Mac Pro, um, and it is looking likely that I have figured out what's wrong with it, um, the Mac Pro will not be part of my main setup again. The Mac, both the MacBook Pro and the Hackintosh are a lot faster than the Mac Pro, so it's just nice to use them for the speed. But this is what my setup's looking like. Hope you guys like it, it's very different. Um, one thing I have not done is undo all of the old cabling, so the Hackintosh is still sitting there with all of its old cabling, KVM is still under the desk, I can't be bothered right now, this is absolutely fine. So let me know what you guys think down below, and remember I will be doing a dedicated Q&A just in case you guys want to see that. If you have a lot of questions, I will indeed answer them. So huge thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.